Hey there, I'm your host Lesoe, and in today's video I will show you how to open and close a chest. Behind me we can see a chest, so if we walk over to it, we'll be prompted with a press E to open, and if we press E, the chest will open, if we press this again, it will close. And as you can see, the message changes depending on if the chest is open or not, and if you try spamming this, it won't actually work because it is spam proof. And with all that said, let's begin. All right, so let's go into the content drawer and over here we will import our chest. So I already have my chest imported, but let's say you don't have yours. So select it, drag it in, and while importing, making sure the skeletal mesh is ticked true and the import animations ticked true as well because we need them. So once all that is done, hit import all and you're good to go. I have that imported, so I don't need to import it again. Now let's go into our chest folder. I just uh, put everything so it looks nice and neat. So that's my chest models, everything in there, and as well as the textures. Now the textures for me didn't import properly. So when I imported them, I went inside the material and just uh, hooked these guys up with the relative counterparts. So that's all good. We can exit that. And once you have everything imported, let's get in and start the tutorial. So go into your input actions and create an input action. Now we are creating this because we have to tell our player um, we have to give a key to interact with the chest. So I'll call mine interact for a generic term because you can open doors, pick up items and other things. So save that. You don't actually have to go inside and let's go to our IMC inside of which we will create a new mapping selecting our input action interact and whatever keys you like. For example, E, and we could even do two keys, E and F, since those are the most common keys used to interact with things in the games. Now with that, we have the input action created. Let's go ahead and create a blueprint interface. So let's go and create a folder for this interfaces just to stay organized. You don't have to if you don't want to. And over here, go to blueprint, blueprint interface bpi underscore interact once again just for a generic term and once you go ahead inside you will see a function call this whatever you like i'll call mine interact once again so this will be the message we send to our chest letting our chest know uh, chest know it should be opened or closed so with that that's done let's go to our player to set up that code so once you're inside of your, uh, of your player character blueprint uh, go and go ahead and look for a interact uh, input action. So on started, we will do for each loop with break like that. And in the array, we just want to go over the overlapping actors. So get overlapping actors. And in our case, this is the chest blueprint. So we haven't actually created that. So let's do it really quick. Uh, chest and I'll do it inside of my chest folder. So blueprint class and select the actor bp underscore chest. So just save that and in here in the get overlapping actors we can search chest and there we go. So in the array element this is the next part does implement interface and the interface we're checking for is the one we just created bpi interact. Then after that get a branch and this will be true of course in our case because we will have a chest. Uh, at the very end, we just want to do a, what was this, um, interact. So we are just sending the message to our chest, letting it know it should be opened. And at the very end of that, you just want to hook it up to the break. So we reset everything and it can check again if there are more things around. Um, yeah, we can then go ahead, comment our code calling it something like interact code, if you will. There you go. Uh, compile that, save it, and we don't have to do anything inside of our player anymore. So go ahead and press X. And let's go maybe create a interface. So widget blueprint, user widget, or better call it interface, a widget, I mean, wb underscore interact prompt or something. And once inside, we want a canvas panel. And this will be used to display our message open or close. I will get a border 
and this border will be in the center like that with a alignment of 0.5 and 0.5 again uh, reset the x and y and for the size x i'll give it a 300 value and for size y a 60 value for the brush color i'll go all black and 0.2 on the opacity with that i also want a blur which will be hooked up to our border with a strength of two so this just gives us a nice blur effect uh, on the border and one more thing the most important thing is our text so drag that into the canvas panel size to content anchors in the middle same thing applies 0 0.5 0 0.5 hit enter reset the x and y and for the text it doesn't really matter what you put but let's just see if it fits press e to open and it does so once this fits you want to bind it create binding and over here we will create a variable calling it whatever you like um something like maybe interact var will do for me and for the type we just want to select text so get it to a format text we want to break this link and inside of here this will be our message so how or not how but press e to whatever close open so this we can do curly brackets x curly brackets and whatever we put in x will be the message connecting it like that making it look pretty compile save and we can exit from here we can go ahead and open up our bp underscore chest blueprint and navigate to the viewport hitting the add in the top left corner and let's search for a skeletal mesh with that i'll call mine chest and in the skeletal mesh asset i'll select my medieval chest now this is pretty big so let's make it 0.3 i found this value to be pretty good uh, but mess around with it and if you're not sure how big this should be we can drag it in to our world and if we hit play we can see the size now this is a chest with no collision so let's go ahead and add some collision to our chest making it block all one more thing we need to add in here is bp uh, select bp underscore chest and add a collision i will select a box collision so calling it box collision like so and let's make it a little bit bigger so maybe three two two how is that looking a little bit bigger maybe let's do three uh, for uh, much better i like this a lot better so i think i'm happy with this let's compile that save it and let's go into the event graph now you don't need these guys so delete them and let's call our box collision so right click on this add event add on component begin overlap right click again add event add on component and overlap and with that, this will um, display our message should the chest uh, say open or close. So from here, we will do a create widget. And the widget we are creating is the one we just made. So I believe interact prompt. There we go. Return value will be promoted to a variable because we want to save a reference. So wb underscore interact prompt is the name. Now from here, I want to create a check. So we check if it should say open close. So the condition will be is chest open. Drag that into the condition, just like that. And on true, we will get a reference of our widget blueprint. So drag it, get it, and do set interact variable. So this will say if the chest is open, if it is true, it should say close and vice versa. Oh, what did I just do? Let's just delete that. Um, interact variable. So just set that uh, close. And if we control paste and let's do open. So on true, we want to say close. And then on false, we want to say open like that and just make sure you connect the other uh, target 
if you select this and then that and press Q, it will align it nicely for you. And at the very end, one more thing, we want to display this. So add to viewport, otherwise all of our work will go for nothing because we won't actually see it without this last node here. And for the end overlap, you just want to drag your get uh, widget and say remove from parent because we no longer want to see it if we are out of the range. So let's just uh, compile and save that and see how it's looking. Hit play. If we go near, press E to open. And that's looking good. Now, uh, maybe we can test it or yeah, we can't just yet. So select all of that and call it the begin slash end overlap. And now for the animation part. So this is where our chest will open. We want to go to class settings and import our blueprint interface so bpi interact and once you have done that if you go on the left hand side interfaces if you double click on it it'll create an event for you event interact so basically whenever we press e it's sending a message here and whatever is here will be carried out so let's create a do once let's say delay so that's wrong a do once and plug it in so from here, I want to create a branch because I want to check is the chest open or closed. So get it connected. And then if you alt click, drag it in, we will set it. So if the chest is open, if it is true, we want to close it. So this will stay false and vice versa. If it is false, we want to open it. Now here we can just steal uh, our set variable. So this should be the other way around. So if the chest is closed, we want to say open. And if it is, if it is the other, we want to say close. And then what should we do then? From here, we want to play the animation. So select the chest and play animation. Now here is where I run into a problem. So I'll just show you what I mean. Now we can do this for both of them because we need to play when we open it and we need to play when we close it. So we can actually make this a little neater if I do that. So we can select our animation that comes with the chest. But before we do that, I actually want to tweak it. Um, so it suits our purpose a little better. So chest model, animation sequence, I will right click and duplicate this guy. Just in case we mess it up, we have a backup. And I will call it open like that, go inside, and from around key 30, 35 frames, I will right click and remove 0 to 35. Now that's because it takes a while at start to open, so I just don't like that. Now that's one animation, we want to right click on our create an animation, duplicate it, call it close. And if you double click inside, we just want to set the rate scale to be minus 1, because we want to reverse it, so it looks like it's closing. Now here, you could type in open in our chest blueprint again, and then close in the top one. And you'd think it should work. It should, but let's just disable the do once. So I show you why it's not working. Compile that, hit play. We press E, chest opens, press E, it closes, but it snaps shut very fast. Now I have no idea why this happens, but a workaround I found for it is like this. You connect the do once, and over here, you say looping, which kind of breaks our code. And we select the chest again, doing uh, is playing. So if this is playing, we get a branch. And this will be true because it is constantly looping. We will do a chest once again and do stop. Now, this stop should go after a delay. And the delay is dependent on how long your animation is. Now, if you cut it at the 35 frames at the beginning, your duration will be two. That should work fine for you. And now if it is not, just play around with the value that works for you. And at the very end, we want to connect the stop into the reset like that. And just bring this guy out. Like so, so it's not in our way and we can see it uh, connect clearly. And for our open animation, all we have to do is get a delay again so 
D, left mouse button, you'll get a delay. And for this, I found a value of 1.5 to work just fine. And the same thing applies, uncompleted. We do reset like that. And then just move this. And one more thing if you wanted to do, but it's not necessary, you got to get a print string just to say closed or open if you wanted to. But that should work for us fine. So let's comment this code and say chest animation. Now everything should work fine. And because of the do once, we won't be able to spam open or spam close. And if we go up to it, press E, it opens for us text uh, changes like it should. And if I spam it, that doesn't work. So guys, this is pretty much it. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.